It's amazing that they fall on that side. Hey, look at the history of the Jewish people. Man, it's, it's recorded that they, that's been, man, major suffering throughout their, their whole history. And so it has to be demonically inspired for them to say, no, we're going to hit y'all right into this. It's, it's a shame. Thanks for listening to Culture Proof. I'm Miki. And I'm Will. And today we are talking about Black Lives Matter. Which, Again? I mean, yeah, we've been talking about Black Lives Matter for, for a number of years, um, exposing um, the motives and exposing the heart, the convictions, um, and the philosophy of right. this militant organization. And today's conversation is no different. It seems that BLM is praising Hamas for the brutal attacks carried out against Israelis. Um, mm. And, you know, really, it shouldn't be surprising, right. but... Um, Maybe in some ways it is. Maybe in some ways it will be um, for people who continue to believe that BLM cares about the well-being and the positive outcomes of black Americans. Yeah. yeah, when when you think about when you think about who our allies are and you think about who we um, hitch our wagons to, it says a lot about the direction that we're going in. Right. Yeah. We're not going to hitch our wagons. Um, to to an animal that's going in the opposite direction. And so, anyway, we got to talk about that. But first, how about some Culture Proof housekeeping? Yes, yes. Thank you so much for your support of the Culture Proof podcast. Thank you for sharing the, the shows, and uh, that helps uh, the reach to grow. So continue sharing the shows. Uh, if, if you find that these are uh, some, this is some content that you enjoy and that you uh, glean from, please share it with a friend, family, or whoever. Also, Give it a five star rating. That helps us to get discovered, to be mm -hmm. discovered. You know, so five star rating, uh, write a review, man, that really helps out a lot. And then also leave comments. We love the engagement, so keep engaging. Yeah, thank you so much for that. Thank you for your feedback. We appreciate. Even over on our YouTube channel, there are questions that are posted under videos. I want you to know that we see those questions and we see those comments. And incidentally, some of the questions that you're asking and some of the comments. Um, we actually have anticipated, so we're working on shows mm -hmm. to respond to some of your, your comments. You know, one of the things that we try to do is um, maintain a practical application to the way we do shows. Like, what does this mean for us in our lives? What does this mean as we try to rear our children and just really live for the glory of God? And so that means then when we're doing programs, mm -hmm. um, there's the right question. Okay, so how do I do this with my kids? Like, how do I have this conversation? And so right. we anticipate those and then we try to schedule shows that will answer some of those. Um, we can't always work it out as neatly as we'd like. Uh, so sometimes we may get down the line and then we do a show on a topic. But just know that many of the shows are sparked by a need for follow up yeah. and, um, and yeah. to help with practical application of what we're saying. So all of that to say, Keep the questions and the comments and the ideas for podcast episodes coming mm -hmm. because those are really super valuable to us and what we do. Yes, they are. And man, I just I'm thinking about the mission that God has called us to and it's really to equip the body of Christ, Amen. families, you know, uh, to disciple in the home and to to carry out the Great Commission, all of that. And we really take that seriously. So I, I just want to say thank you for joining us in the resistance mm -hmm. as we see the things happening in the culture. You know, we have a mandate to resist it. That's the right. Things that are evil. And so. Man, we want to do that. We want to help to equip the body of Christ with this information. Yeah, and it's not easy. Listen, I, I just want to say, like, as as genuine followers of the Lord Jesus Christ, we find ourselves in a tension in the culture that we live in where we we recognize that this is not our home. Mm -hmm. We still want to engage while we are here. We want yes. to be faithful. We want to occupy, make gains um, until the Lord returns. And so we find ourselves trying to walk sort of this, you know, this line where we are engaging the culture, but we're not allowing the culture to seep into us and begin to define us. We want to be defined by the culture of Christ. And I'm saying that very specifically because mm -hmm. I think when we say Christian culture, it can still sound like it's kind of taken on the world, mm -hmm. you know, and that's mm -hmm. unfortunate. Yeah. But um, we want to take seriously wearing the name of Christ. And so anyway, you guys are a part of that. You join the resistance. Yeah. Uh, learn more about what we do by going to cultureproof.net, mm -hmm. cultureproof.net. Um, and we'll just jump right into content here. Uh, this article grabbed my attention. It says um, BLM backs Hamas. And then it says a terrorist organization supports a terrorist organization. Um, this is commentary by Tony Kinnett. 
um, over at the Daily Signal. And I thought it was really interesting because, again, it sort of reminds me of when we were talking about the witches casting spells Mm -hmm. uh, during the Trump uh, election. Um, and, And you start to ask the question, like, wait a minute, like... If you've got witches that are casting Another spells, day like giveaway. Another day of the giveaway. it just kind of says a lot about like, okay, so what side, like, you right. know, right. 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 Beelzebub <laughs> is not going to drive out Beelzebub. Right. Okay. Um, so anyway, here's the article. Let me share a little bit of, of it. And then we'll talk around what's happening um, in our country with the rise of antisemitism. And, and, and I would say the rise is not just in the wake of what happened in Israel. Like this has been going on for a while. Um, We see it in the halls of Congress. We see it in our institutions of higher learning. Uh, We see it, I would say, even seeping into our elementary schools, like our K-12 schools, where there is sort of this. And again, I would say that it's the outflow of exalted multiculturalism and even um, wanting to see a reduced discernment among people. And uh, anyway, those are the kinds of things that we resist. But here's the article. Black Lives Matter chapters in Indianapolis and Chicago are drawing sharp bipartisan criticism, and I'm happy to hear that, for praising the heinous actions of Hamas in its brutal invasion of Israel. Again, this is Tony Kennett writing for the Daily Signal. He says on Tuesday, uh, the Black Lives Matter indie organization retweeted a post from the U.S. Palestinian Community Network praising the the heroic, and this is a quote here, the heroic Palestinian people and their right to resist their racist, white supremacist, land stealing, land stealing Zionist occupiers. Hmm. End quote. Wow. Yeah, you know, in that is a belief that from what I'm hearing, that statement, it sounds like the belief that the Israelites, the Israelis who are there now are not real Jews. Because they say white you know, it, it's it's like they it's like a, a group that that's taken over, and that's not the real ones. And so they're they're like just white people. No, well, it's you interesting know, to me though. White people. You know, this is interesting to me because I think what you're kind of alluding to here is the Black Hebrew Israelite conviction as well. Yeah. And so there may be some of that involved in this. But it's really interesting to me that when you talk about. Um, people who were gassed to death uh, during the Holocaust, when you talk about people who were ripped from their families and who were experimented on, um, um, it it sure didn't seem to serve them or to serve their purpose to be Jewish, right? Right. I mean, it it sure didn't serve them well to be white supremacist occupiers. Like, maybe maybe that's just truly their ethnicity. Maybe Maybe they just truly are Hebrews. I mean, it's absolutely insane. And when you think about now, one of the things that I find really ignorant about this and even ignorant about the alignment is that when you survey the history of the Jewish people, Mm -hmm. you would see that as like the greatest types of oppression wrought against these people over the centuries. Like, I mean, it just is unthinkable. Unless you believe it's fake. Because the thing Mm -hmm. is, if you're Black Lives Matter, it seems like you would have a lot in common with the Jewish people, you'll say like, oh man, we understand, mm-hmm. you know, it, but it, unless you think, oh man, it, either that didn't really happen or it, it, it was warranted or something like that. Which is, which is tacitly taught in a lot of our schools today. Yeah. Like either it is just ignored, the Holocaust is ignored, or it is revised when it's told and doesn't adequate, adequately depict what actually happened yeah. to Jewish people. And, and I think that is just abhorrent. And, and this, this could be the outflow of this. Again, this points to why education is so important or the lack thereof, right? Proper education is so important, that's right. But even when you have these deficits, you can see that the result of the deficit has far-reaching consequences. People are easily led astray. People easily align themselves with wickedness, whether, you know, they will vet it or not. They just, it sounds good. They want to be a part of that. And then they go in that direction. Yeah. All right, let's go back to this article. The allegations in the tweet are objectively false and grossly anti-Semitic. Hamas is not resisting Israeli aggression, but invaded Israel on Saturday via more than 80 holes in the Israeli-Gaza border wall on Simchat Torah, a Jewish holiday. Resisting also doesn't characterize the act of brutally raping families in their homes, parading naked bodies through the streets, or... and. Caution, if you've got a little one listening here, I should have given that earlier, but beheading babies and leaving their bodies in the dirt. Guys, this 
This is what Hamas did. And 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 if you're if you're listening and you still were kind of like on the fence, I don't think that many of our listeners would be on the fence about, you know, BLM and whether or not its motives are altruistic, that they're selfless in their plight for, you know, black oppressed people. I don't think many of our listeners would be duped by that narrative, understanding its founders, that, that they are lesbian Marxists, self-avowed, like they, this, is, this is what they are about. Um, but this is troubling that you would have people tweet out lies and mm. then actually produce propaganda. Yeah, yeah. Now that's really disturbing to me because mm. one of the things that um, Black Lives Matter did was put together almost like a like a, a cartoon strip to show in their words what happened um, between Hamas and Israel. And it's incredibly disturbing. So you've got these two individuals who are seated across from one another. And you've got one person who says, I can't believe that Hamas has taken Israeli settlers hostage. Then you have the other person who says, you said nothing about Israel holding 2.4 million Palestinians in Gaza hostage for the past 16 years. And by the way, both of these people happen to be black in the strip mm -hmm. here, of course. okay? Because this is meant to um, produce the type of conversation that is expected to happen among black people, right? Mm -hmm. So now you've got to address the lies. And now you've got to say, hold on a second. Now you've got leadership, you've got terrorist leadership in Gaza that is refusing to allow its citizens to get to a place of safety. So, so not only do you have hostages taken from Israel, but you've got Palestinian hostages. These people care nothing even about their own people, if you will. Wow. But that's not in this post. And the other thing that I find interesting is that Black Lives Matter Chicago, while they tweet out this strip, you actually see them thanking those who funded or provided, let me say provided, mm. um, the information that they used, right? So they say, we listen. We also have a responsibility to make sure our demographic can understand what is happening. Higher education isn't um, for everyone, and we want to make sure that everyone can understand what is happening. We want to thank everyone for the links and videos and for sending that our way to make sure we break it down and so that people can understand. This is what BLM is tweeting out. Wow. <laughs> so, so the so the question is, who furnished this information for them? Mm -hmm. Where where are they getting this? Oh, you know, it's backed by you know an agenda holding people or a set of people. Like this is the narrative that needs to be out there in the black community. Come on, and it, it is scary to me that because it comes from BLM. Even after everything that we've seen happen, we've seen BLM, um, you know, misappropriating funds. Right. You know, we, we've seen all of these things. Um, there still is not going to be a challenge of this because it comes from a certain organization. And because in many contexts, color is an idol. Yeah. This is going to be received without objection. And because of like, quite plainly, guilt, you know, yeah. history, history of a nation that's going to be used to say like, hey, you know, you can't stop us or say anything against us because even if it's false, even if it's lies, it's like, you know, you don't be racist. <laughs> no, I mean, and, and that's, that's where we are. I, you know, I look, black lives matter terrorized communities all across this country. BLM militants terrorize communities all across this country. And for them to align themselves with Hamas is, is not far from where they actually are. Like if you if you think about it, and Kenneth includes this in his piece over at the Daily Signal, he writes, after the death of George Floyd in Minneapolis in May of 2020, Black, Black Lives Matter's protests turned into violent and destructive riots across the United States. Buildings were burned down via mob arson in Kenosha, Wisconsin, Minneapolis, Indianapolis, Chicago, and elsewhere. So how how you couldn't even expect them to not identify with terrorism, hmm. right? You couldn't, because what happened in neighborhoods all across this country, even in the black neighborhoods mm -hmm. that they purported to care about, right. there was terrorism. Right. right. There were, where now you've got drugstores that have to shut down. Well, now you've got people being shot. You've got the elderly looking for safety, not able to get out and get their prescriptions. Why? Because BLM is holding and shutting everything down. Which, which to me, falls into the category of terrorism. Yeah. 
And so for them to be supporting Hamas doesn't to me seem surprising. Right. It is disturbing. Right. It is incredibly disturbing, but it is not surprising. Right. It's not a, a stretch because it's the same type of, of heart, you know, that, that beats in terrorism. Mm. You know, and, and, and it's sad. It's sad to say, you know, but it's, it's the truth. So when you hear something like this, it's not like, oh, my goodness, I can't. Mm-hmm. Well, I can believe because of what they've been putting out there already. Yeah. Yeah. I I will say this. I am glad to know that um, politically speaking, that you've got politicians on both sides of the aisle who are condemning this, who are saying that this is wrong. And I think that's the first time in a long time that you've seen people have the boldness to come out and say anything against BLM, unless you already know where they stand. Right. I mean, the, the, the people who are discerning and have been for a long time, They've always said they've already always uh, spoken out, Mm -hmm. but to have some even Democrats saying, no, we condemn this type of rhetoric. We condemn these kinds of posts. I think that's really good. Um, Speaking of the things that are happening at the collegiate level, um, it's interesting that university diversity, equity and inclusion offices Mm -hmm. are not being inclusive of Jewish students. Hmm. Why? Well, because that's not really why they're there. There, I mean, there is one particular viewpoint. <laughs> oh man. man, that's messed up. But can I just say it? It really does point <laughs> to the driving force behind a lot of the um, the oppression that we want to exalt hmm. in our in our culture today or in our country at large. That there's a there's a driving force behind it, and it's not genuine. I mean, it's not genuine at all. Here is um, Adam Novak, again, writing for the Heritage Foundation. Um, and this is what he writes. He says, would you send a check to support Hamas's gleeful slaughter of innocent Israeli civilians? Your alma mater may help you do it. Wow. Israel, America's great ally, faced the darkest day in its history on Saturday. There is simply no moral justification for Hamas's terror. The only normal response is to condemn such violence. Yet, on college campuses across this country, administrators, faculty, and student activists took turns blaming Israel Hmm. all across this country. And, back to the article, expressing enthusiastic support for Hamas. And while alumni have been shocked and appalled at these spectacles, it's often their money that's mm-hmm. fueling such outrages by expanding diversity, mm-hmm. equity, and inclusion bureaucracies. Right. You got to ask, where are they getting the Come on. ideas from? Come on. You know, and if it's all across the country, universities, like, so what's going on in the classrooms? Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Yep. So there's indoctrination that's happening. Yes. And then you've got the alumni who are pumping dollars into the universities right. who up until this time, and I would say recently what you see happening from former alumni um, from universities like Harvard, they're finally taking notice at the rank hypocrisy that they are funding by sending money back to their alma mater, right? Like sending money back to these universities. Um, there's one article, let me just pull it up here. There was one article I read, and this is from CNN, actually, where a man by the name of Leslie Wexner and his wife, Abigail, they actually are um, the founders of Victoria's Secret. Sorry for the imagery that might be called to mind there. And um, Bed Bath and Beyond. Right. Mm -hmm. And six billion dollars, I think, is their net worth. And they have sent a lot of money to Harvard over the years. Well, they have pulled their funding because of what's going on at Harvard. The Wexner Foundation's decision to end its relationship and financial support for Harvard is the latest fallout amid criticism from donors who are alarmed by the university's initial response to the attack um, uh, to the attacks and to anti-Israel statements issued by student groups. So what happens, you've got these student groups that are rallying together mm-hmm. and expressing anti-Israel sentiment. Right. And instead of the university coming out with a strong hand and saying, look, while we value free speech and these students are free to express themselves as they would like, we, the university, do not share these views. We do not hold these values. And so we want to make a distinction. Nope, they're not doing that. They're not doing that. And so their silence seems an awful lot like agreement. Mm, Man, that's crazy. And so they're going to pay the price for it. I mean, if they feel like they want to go ahead along with this evil agenda, you know, because these these things, again, are being taught 
in the classrooms, in the schools. The professors are pumping this stuff out. Like the, these, the, the, the children, the young people are getting this from somewhere. And so now when you have this happening all across the country, it should not be a surprise because they've been pumped with this stuff in, in, in uh, high school, now in college. Mm -hmm. And so this is what you're going to get. Like, duh, this is what you're going to get. This is what you're going to get. And, and I will tell you, though, I really think that the dollar is very loud. Like yeah. the dollar is yeah. very loud. And so when you've got the Wexner Foundation hmm. pulling funds from um, from schools like Harvard and not just pulling their funds, but pulling their funds with a strongly worded letter, uh, hmm. I want to quote. Uh, let's see. What did they write? Um, quote, Harvard's leaders were indeed tiptoeing, equivocating. And we, like former Harvard President Larry Summers, cannot fathom the administration's failure to disassociate the university and condemn the statement swiftly issued by 34 student groups holding Israel entirely responsible for the violent terror attack on its own citizens. That's from the Wexner Foundation. That's the letter mm -hmm. that they sent to Harvard, letting Harvard know that they're pulling their funding from the university. Now, look, that's a, it's, a, it's a lot to lose money. You know, universities are always looking for funding. They hold in high esteem their alumni who send back, especially when you've got a university like Harvard. Right. Um, but hey, Hey, you've got organizations who are saying, look, tell me who these students, who I want their names. Mm. All right. You've got companies, Fortune 500 companies that yeah. are saying, we're not going to hire, bring their names. We're not going to hire these, these folks. Let me know who they no, are I so we can avoid them. I don't blame them. Yeah, no, it's a good thing. It's a you know? really good thing. And I'm going to tell you, man, look, one of the things that I, that I, that I value about being able to educate our kids at home and really being able to make sure that they have a biblical worldview is that these are among the things that we don't have to lie in bed awake at night worrying mm -hmm. if this is going to seep into the way they see the world. Right. Our right. country and our culture has normalized hatred, um, especially hatred against Jews. I mean, this is something that is normal in our culture. And you go back to BLM and you think, how would they hitch their, their, their wagons to this? Mm -hmm. Well, because it reveals the sinister and the demonic aim and underpinnings of the organization itself. Yeah, and it's amazing that they fall on that side. It, it's not amazing, but it is. Because I guess their view would be, well, the Palestinian people have suffered. you know. But when you look at the history of the Jewish people, man, it's, it's recorded that they, that's been... Man, major suffering throughout their their whole history, and so it has to be demonically inspired for them to say, "No, we're going to hitch our wagon to this," because and that's the that's the agenda, you know, that's being pumped in the universities, you know, and BLM is going along with it as well as so many others, and it's it's, it's shameful. You know, and I think even going back as far as understanding the Palestinian people and understanding that they came into a land that was given to. Jewish people. It was given to Israel. I mean, and I know that this is this is very difficult when you have this conversation, but to even understand how when you drive a people out of their land, then allow other inhabitants to come in and try to change the name of the land so that you erase the history. This is a covenant made between God and his people. Yeah. This land is sacred land, and I, I'm I'm not trying to be sensational. I'm trying to be biblical here. Right. We look at the scriptures. We look at the promise that God made to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob. This and and also also consider that Israel has repeatedly tried to compromise with the Palestinian people, mm -hmm. repeatedly, and now under terrorist leadership, under terrorist leadership, this is what those repeated attempts at compromise have have afforded them. Yeah. I mean, 1,300 people slaughtered, wow. people taken as hostages, people paraded in the street, unclothed. Like it, it's barbaric to understand the gravity of what has happened, and I cannot stress it enough. And so again, when you understand all that has happened, and then you consider that Black Lives Matter is saying, we stand with the Palestinian people. Yeah. It, it's sad all the way around as I think about the whole situation, what's going on, because there'll be Palestinian people who will be killed as well. And, and it's like, man, when you, th when you think yeah. about it, you know, Hamas is 
doing things like setting up their camps in hospitals and schools. So they, I mean, they're, they're like, they don't care about it's the people. It's a disregard for the lives of their own people. They don't people. care about the people. And it's sad that, you know, so many will die on, you know, on both sides. Like, so you know, and, and also, you know, we, we talked a little bit about, you know, just kind of hearing here and there about there are Palestinians who are Christians. That's right. You know, man, that's sad when you consider that because if they're genuinely Christians, then they are brothers and sisters mm -hmm. for real. That's mm -hmm. it. I mean, that's how it goes, you know. But at the same time, you cannot just erase and say and try to make believe like what what happened didn't happen. Yes. And and just blame one group of people and say, oh, it's really their fault. It's really their fault when and, and excuse what happened with this terrorist group, you mm -hmm. know, and, and that's what is happening here. And it's it, man, it just kind of shows the hypocrisy of it all. Yeah, it really does. And we were watching a video with our children. Uh, CBN had a video piece of a man who was a Hezbollah terrorist mm. and he talked about his hatred for the Jews and he talked about how he had never even met a Jewish person before, but just hatred was in his heart and he encountered Jesus and it changed his life. It changed the way he saw the world, mm. right? And I think about that and I think about the solution for what we see happening, the the hatred and the division and the, the malice, the desire for blood, mm. right? As has been um, used to describe what happened in Israel. All of this is eradicated by the precious blood of Jesus Christ. It is the Lord Jesus Christ who tears down dividing walls, walls between ethnic people groups and walls between religious beliefs, right? To say, hey, this is the one true and living God, the God whom you seek. I'm going to make him known to you. And so in all of this, not only do we pray for believers who are both in Israel and in uh, Palestine, but we also, we want to pray for those who are yet to come to the Lord Jesus Christ, that their soul would be saved. Amen. We want to pray for Israel. I, I, I cannot stress it enough. We want to pray for Israel. We want to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. And we want to pray for the Lord to be exalted and glorified. And I know that that makes people uncomfortable because everybody's looking for the neutral way to be able to describe this and to talk about it. But I only know one way to talk about it. And that's in light and through the lens of scripture. Amen. That's that's Amen. the way that we culture proof ourselves. The culture may change and, and the pendulum you know, swings back and forth. And to whom do we give our allegiance? And what do we say about these people? And how mm. do we think and how do we feel? I don't want to live like that. What, right. what I want to do is I want to say, what has God revealed to us in his eternal word? Yeah. Yeah. And it doesn't change. What, what has God said? Right. What, what has God called us to? Right. And that's where I want to land. That's the only way that we culture proof ourselves. That's the only yes. way that we resist. I think that's the best way to go out of the program. That's, <laughs> that's the only way that we resist those cultural trends that rival the truth. Right. When we do that, when we hold true to the word of God, that is how we remain culture proof. Until next time, Lord willing. God bless. I'm so self-conscious about the sound of my mouth. I hate that. <laughs> That's awful. <laughs>